am a uh, I am a part of the ESO podcast. Uh, we are a weekly show, and I'm sure you'll hear all about it here in this hour. Um, I'm also a writer of uh, novels and stuff, so I, I hawk a lot of work on my podcast. Excellent. Also, next up is Mike Gordon. Mike? I am a uh, comic writer and publisher, uh, creator of Tiki Zombie. I'm also co-host of the Earth Station One um, uh, podcast, podcast. weekly podcast. Also, uh, the Earth Station Who uh, weekly, bi-weekly, whatever, no. whatever comes out. It's, it's bi-weekly except when the show is on. Yeah. Right. And uh, I've got my own podcast, which is starting up pretty soon, which is probably going to be monthly, uh, called The New Legend Lounge. And more importantly to our thing today, you are the host of the ESO Dragon Con Report. I am That's the host right. of the Dragon Con Report, and uh, yes, and of course my new podcast would be will be on the ESO Network. Very good. And if you don't get a chance to talk to Mike up here after the, uh, he'll be on the Artist Alley, right? You can be right. still down there. Uh, yes, yes, I will be there. It's a happening place. So. It is. I love it. Next up is our uh, Mike Faber. He does uh, stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do stuff. The he stuff. does stuff. The stuff. That's. Um, I'm the host of the Earth Station One podcast. I'm also the host of the Earth Station Who podcast. And I participate with the Dragon Con Report, and I also participate with about three or four other podcasts that are on my network. Um, I'm the one, cra- the one who's crazy enough to say, hey, let's get more shows to come on with us. And I actually found people who are suckers enough to be able to do it with us. And it was, it's been great. Um, it's like one big family. Right. And we are continually growing and adding new shows to it. And the quality of these shows are getting better and better. It's just a lot of fun, so it's cool. I like it. I like it. Jessa Phillips. Yeah, uh, I'm the founder and editor in chief of GoodToBeGeek.com. I'm also the broadcast director for Good to Be Geek Network. Uh, currently, I produce and host three fan podcasts as well as we uh, air a video cast. Uh, we are syndicated on the Evo gaming console, it's a third party console. Yes. Uh, soon to be another third party console, and we're currently in talks to do uh, a digital radio syndication as well. Very cool. Rob Roberts. Howdy. Uh, Rob with the Voice of Geeks Network, uh, where I am the uh, editor in chief of the content for the network, uh, where we have about 11 podcasts on Voice of Geeks Network. Um, I actually co produce and co host two of the podcasts on the network uh, Horde House, which is an online gaming related show, and uh, Orange Lounge Radio, which has been running weekly since 2002 about uh, all things video gaming, where every gamer has a voice, and uh, Orange Lounge Radio actually started as a network because I needed something to put the show on uh, way back in 2002, before podcasting was a thing. Excellent. Also, last but not least, Bobby Back Blackwolf. That is everyone doing wrong, didn't I? Bobby Blackwolf. There. Bobby Nashwolf? God, <laughs> there are way too many dogs and mics and... Can we make the last of There you go. Uh, so, Bobby Blackwolf, I... Uh, I am the editor-in-chief technical of the Voice of Geeks Network, which means I make everything run. Uh, and uh, I've been hosting a show for nine years that I named after myself, Bobby Nash Wolf, obviously. Um, Bobby Blackwell Show, I named it after myself uh, to be stupid, and also so Jay Leno couldn't take over my position. <laughs> um, I've been doing that for about nine years. I helped start uh, the All Games Radio Network, uh, which was uh, w- probably one of the first video game podcasts in 2005. Uh, it was owned by a man by the name of Scott Rubin. He he did the All Games Network back in the 90s with Pseudo Interactive, if anybody remembers that, in the real media days. But then he co-founded this little television channel called G4. And then uh, when they destroyed Tech TV, he left. Uh, and that's kind of when I got into that. So I founded, I helped start that network and did kind of the technical stuff for him there. And then I'm, we left about two years ago and created the Voice of Geeks Network. Sounds like fun. Mike, are you ready to kick this thing off? Yeah, sure. All right, Doug, go for it. All right. Um, most of us were wondering, you know, why did you guys start a network? You said, mentioned that it was because of hosting that you were looking somewhere to publish your podcast. Um, what do you get out of being on a network? Well, I mean, in the case of way back in 2002, and I don't want to go back too much into the history because things have evolved so much, it doesn't kind of matter the way things were back then. But uh, back in 2002, you know, there, podcasting wasn't really a thing yet. So um, Life 365 was a big, I think they're still around, but I know that was a big service back in the day. We wanted to do music as well as have our show, and, and Life 365 was a way to kind of keep everything legal. 
Um, so that was kind of what kind of drew us over there. We started doing the show. But um, we noticed that as we were doing our show and we had this, you know, network uh, that was essentially just a content delivery service at the time, there were other people that wanted to, you know, kind of like friends of the show as things kept going, that wanted to do their own things and wanted a space to do it. And so I was kind of like, all right, come on over. We'll give you a space to do your thing. So we had, we had probably about five or six spinoff shows in the heyday. Um, and uh, I think for them, it was definitely, you know, it was a place to be able to do their show. Uh, but for us, it was great, you know, it was great cross promotion. It was great, um, it was great synergy to be able to say, hey, stay tuned. You've got this coming up at this day. And, you know, they might continue the conversation we had here and, and so on. So I, I think it was a really good way to kind of establish um, probably your, your base and keep that growing. You work in the corporate world, right? Because you use the word synergy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Okay, Jessica? That word. Uh, it sort of organically happened. Uh, I started a podcast. I wanted to talk about things that I enjoy and wanted to talk about more things. And it just, I already had the site. It made sense. Uh, most people, you know, we have a really broad spectrum, being that we cover all geeky things we enjoy. Uh, so it really gives us an opportunity to branch out into all sorts of places. Uh, it really just came down to giving it a home. Uh, one, one place where you have to go and find it all. Uh, and it's, it's worked out pretty well. Okay. People found it, they liked it. Well, exactly. And what we found, you know, we started out as a one podcast. We started off with First Edition 1. And through our infancy and stuff, we originally started out that we wanted to be a Doctor Who podcast. But we started talking about other things because we all had different interests and such. And as we grew, um, we, you know, people were starting to write us, hey, why are you talking so much about Doctor Who and stuff? And we all still loved it. So we spun it into a second program and we did our first spinoff. And then we said, okay, we have two shows. How are we going to keep it? You know, we can keep it on our website and such where, you know, people can find us and we kept the, the name fairly similar so people would be able to do name recognition. But then... We call um, branding in the corporate world. Okay, well, <laughs> I design in the corporate world. I don't live in it. <laughs> but we basically, um, you know, we're at TimeGate and we started talking to friends of the show and Dr. Scott Vigay um, was talking to me about doing a science podcast and he says, would you m want to have it living under the ESO banner? And basically, I said, yeah, let's maybe start a network doing that. And at the show, I did an intro to podcasting panel and started talking to people there. And after the show, um, some, a couple of people came up to me and said, oh, I want to talk to you about how to set up a podcast, what tools do you use and such. The typical, you guys probably get that also when you guys talk about it. And um, when we did that, um, a couple came up to me named Rita and Jason Della Torre. And they said, oh, we're thinking about doing a podcast. Would you be interested in us joining your network? And I said, sure. I didn't expect to hear from them for months because we had, I, ta I talked to probably like 10, 15 people at this point. And they said, oh, yeah, we would like to maybe join up with you. I hadn't heard from most of them. Within three days, I heard from Jason and Rita, and they had their first podcast ready to go. <laughs> and they've been part, one of the founders of the network since, and it's been awesome. It's just We've been growing and growing. It's a lot of friends of the show or people writing me, hey, would you mind listening to our podcast? I have some, some ideas. You know, would anyone would you be interested in having us join your network and such? And what we're the way we're setting it up is we're, we're in it for trying to make money with it and everything, but we're also doing, trying to do cross promotion and stuff with all the different shows. And that's one of the most important things with it because we're trying to promote each other. People are finding all the different shows I've had people here at Dragon Con come up to me and say, oh, I listen to all the different ESO network shows. I says, really? You know. When do you sleep? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like it or maybe they sleep when they, when that's what the, maybe yeah, that's yeah, what puts yeah, them to sleep. <laughs> well, exactly. And, you know, and Bobby and Mike have a lot of different connections and such. Bobby with his writing friends and such, and we brought down a couple of the, the people he knew from uh, writing and such. Right, Bobby? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's amazing. Who's splitting it off. You know, we're making money. We have some sponsors. Um, and we also have like the Amazon.com store and such for, you know, making some kind of money and such. And the way we have an agreement with the shows that come on our network 
is, you know, all we ask them to do is play our promo every once in a while, and at the beginning of each show have an opening, this is the ESO network, and at the end, kind of kind of similar to what Chris Hardwick does with the Nerdist th stuff. Um, and, the and do a director's commentary, even though they recorded it like two weeks ago or whatever, and they're just now airing it. How many of your podcasts are li actually live streaming? <sighs> One, two, three. One's a video, so one does live video. Four, five. Five. Yeah. Sure, five. <laughs> yes. And the rest are pre recorded. Yes. So. What about you, Justin? Uh, pretty much all of ours are pre recorded uh, because I have a lot of collaboration and they are in very different locations, a lot of my co hosts. So there are very few of us that are locally, it just makes it easier. Uh, but occasionally, like if we're. For example, our comic book heroines. Uh, occasionally, we'll, we'll hop on on Google Plus and do a hangout, um, and you can <laughs> tune in and, and see our, our zaniness live if you want. It's not going to be what you get in the in the podcast, but so it, it really just depends on where we're at, what we're using to report that episode, um, and who's got time. Okay, got a question though. Well. Go ahead. Finish your, finish I was going to I was going to expand on the other thing about why we because we've both created two networks we created Vogue after the first one and the reason we went out and made our own network even though we were already with the network is because we had ideas and we had things we wanted to try and um, you know all games is, is wonderful they're still around they're huge and everything uh, but they also had ideas and they we just kind of wanted to go in a different direction uh, and so we were like well let's let's see if you know our ideas work or not. Uh, and they were kind of like, no, we, we kind of need to make sure that you know everything's good because we got a lot of people here, and we need to make sure that everything's good uh, for them. So that's often did our own thing. Very good. Question from the audience. Absolutely. All right. So, what do you guys? And this may be just a few of you who won't answer this, but what do you look for when bringing in new podcasters into your network? Are you are you looking for a particular type of person? I mean, do you kind of like scope them out, make sure they're good people first, Google them a little bit, maybe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, make them sign some paperwork because you said there was a little <laughs> bit of paperwork involved, or at least some agreements. Is so that like, it's official? more verbal agreements with us, right? Um, we've had shows that have come on the network and have already left the network too. Um, basically, before when somebody approaches me to do to join ESO, um, I go and a listen to. I, they have to have something that I can listen to, at least a prototype of what kind of podcast. Because some of the podcasts. Mm -hmm are fresh starts, but there's been some that have been established already. So I have to listen to something that they've had. Also, I look at their Facebook, read their any kind of Google information, and you know, items like that, and just try to do some kind of research on them, because I just don't want anyone who sounds like they're talking in a tin cup joining the network or something. Because we we started that way, you know. I started, you know, it was myself and my nephew doing ESO originally. And we've just evolved since then. And you know, I, I'm all for evolving and having uh, shows grow and everything. And that's all what it's about is growth and gaining audience and such. And you know, putting you know, we we get a kick. We would talk the three of us once a week, if even if we weren't recording it. With we, we've had conversations where at the end of it, we were like, you know, if we'd have had a recorder, next week's episode would be done. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But we also, I mean, we do ask the people on our network to do certain things, not big things like, you know, when you put, you know, because a lot of them have their own websites where they post their podcast, but we, they, we have them make sure it's on the ESO website. We ask them to post it to our social media pages so people can find it in one convenient place. But really, I mean, other than that, I mean, there's not a lot of demands. No, we don't yeah. ever ask. They wash. They wash Mike's car once, once a month. Uh, <laughs> so it's an intern kind of situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, 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 there may or may not be a hazing. <laughs> <laughs> One day JD will get out of that. Shh. Going well. What about you guys? Uh, well, for Vogue, we one important thing that we're looking for is we're looking for shows that are already established. So we ask that anybody you know that's interested in joining the network have a minimum of five episodes under their belt, five regular uh, produced episodes under their belt. And um, it's not that we don't want to encourage people to create new podcasts. We do. If they need help with that, I can help them on a personal level. But you know, kind of the very front-facing network might not be the best place to be kind of growing and learning. Uh, all of that. Um, and that 
that sometimes has created some interesting challenges because, um, like, I have a co-host uh, on one of my other shows who wanted to do his own show, and he's like, you know, and he, you know, of course, since he knows me, texts me, calls me, hey, I want to start this new show on your network, and uh, when can I start? And I'm like, after you get five episodes under your belt. Why do I have to get five episodes under my belt? I already co-host a podcast with you. Why can't I do this? Because you have to feel the pain of doing the regular show for a little bit because it's one thing to talk about, it's another thing to do it. And sure enough, those first few weeks were a little bit rough and I was getting a lot of texts like, so how do I get this up on Libsyn? How do I, how does that happen? You know, kind of working all that out. But sure enough, he stuck with it and they've got a great show and it is on the network now. They're about 27 episodes in at this point. Yeah, because well, one of the things to realize is that your first five episodes are going to suck. So yeah, we, uh, that's why we don't listen to anything before episodes. And it takes way more time than you think it will. Oh, very much so. <laughs> yes. the, Especially pre-recorded, if you're going to edit. Oh, very much so. We, we don't do our show live at all. Except and there's a reason. There's a reason yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> there is, you know, we usually take three hours to record one episode of ESO. And I edit it down to anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours. And we, well, and we do it out of order. I mean, our, our show is very much a magazine show. So we do, because we, we bring people on for segments for interviews or whatever. So instead of having those people sit there for three hours for their, you know, the five minutes we're going to have them on, we can do things out of order to fit schedules. And but we also had to evolve to that. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because in the early days, yeah, everybody sat there. Yeah. We, it was a learning stage. And that's always the case. A lot of times we've also found 95% of the podcasts out there, when they record, you know, a, it's a brand new podcast. They're going to get to maybe the fourth or fifth episode and realize how much work it is, and oh, a million people are not listening to their podcast and such, and they drop it and or anything. There has to be a, a form of commitment, and it has to stay fun. And you know, I keep on telling these guys, the day it stops being fun, we're going to stop doing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We actually had an interesting one happen to us. He wanted to he wanted to do his own podcast, and he was he was a writer on our site, and he uh, we were like, okay, well, five episodes, we'll listen to your sixth one. And two days later, he's like, here's episode six. And we're like, what? And he's like, yeah, I, I did six episodes yesterday with my brother. Uh, and we're like, no, that's, that's not it. And, and he wound up actually quitting doing his podcast a couple weeks later. So, you know, we, we look for consistency. And we also check for a fit. You know, we, we talk to them and see, you know, because we, we want to make sure, you know, we don't want Howard Stern on our network. I mean, that's great for other networks. I would but, take them. Well, <laughs> but we're, I would take Howard Stern, but somebody who wants to be the next Howard Stern, not really a good fit for us. So we feel them out. We see, okay, you know, are they going to anger people? You know, like, do they want to anger people or provoke discussion? And there's, there is difference between that. Oh, very much and, so. And, and so, like, I mean, we, we only have 11 shows. It's not. But, but still, though, had, had we have had that one episode that not worked. You know, oh, so yeah. we see what works, and we can then spin off from there. Oh, from the main. I have literally probably come up with five new podcast ideas a week, and as I make topics up, all right, this could make a new podcast. This could make a good podcast. We've already talked about it. We've already decided here at Dragon Con that um, we're going to spin off in the spring and to do a Game of Thrones podcast through the networks and such. Well, so and that's how, that's how we already have the hosts already lined up yeah. for it. And, and that's how we ended up with the Dragon Con report. Yeah. Because that was because we did uh, one year we did a lead up to Dragon Con. Because Dragon Con's the only convention where every, every, every show on the ESO network has someone in the same place. This is the only place we're all here ever at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so we were doing the lead ups to Dragon Con. We were interviewing people. So half of our episode. For like what was it, two months Probably I guess months. leading up yeah. to that so it was like count down the dragon con and those turned out to be our most popular episodes for a while so we we spun it off into its own show which might run so yeah, yeah. We, he does it uh, monthly right yeah I mean we found out that there was I mean we just quickly also discovered that there's enough content that you can come out with uh, a, you know a, a, something about dragon con almost every month of the year not just leading up not just the three or four months so um, that's been uh, well received too, especially for you know the audience of uh, people who are want, are thinking about attending Dragon Con, the newbies, mm -hmm. as well as uh, people who have been here, going here. I mean, I've been going here for 21 years, and there's a lot of stuff I've just learned about Dragon Con, even this weekend. Exactly, and we've even expanded it a bit into the video. Yes, so, um, Darren and myself, another one of the co-hosts, have done uh, walkthroughs of the hotels for newbies, people who haven't. Been 
been here before, and it was the weirdest thing in the world last year watching Dragon Con TV, and the video that we recorded up on YouTube was played on Dragon Con TV. It's like, wait a minute, I can't be that hungover that I'm seeing myself on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> and everything. But it was, it's, it's fun spinning these shows off and growing with it, because we're all, on our network, we're mostly all geeks, and we have our favorite topics, and it's great we all just don't like the same thing, too, which is, which makes it even better. Um, so, and, you know, we've run into some headaches with the network and such, um, sometimes, especially like when Doctor Who starts or stuff, we don't want every show the same week to be the same topic or anything. And that's what we have to be careful with also. What about with you guys? Do you ever run into any of that? Well, well, see, for us, it's kind of nice because we, we encompass a lot of different things. Like, so we, and actually, we have too many video game shows on the network right now, uh, which is kind of, kind of funny because those are the ones that come contact us the most. Like, oh, we do a video game show. Can we be on your network? And we're like, we've already got, like, over half of our stuff. So we don't run into that as much because we have dedicated shows that talk about TV and, you know, British, like British Invaders, Brian is actually in the audience over here, and he... Hi, Brian. Hey, Brian. Um, and, uh, you know, we have Critical Myth, John, I don't know if he's in here today, or I think he's doing another panel right now or something, but um, they'll talk about, like, the TV stuff, so, like, when the new Doctor Who comes out, not every show on the network, all the shows are talking about it, but then, you know, when, you know, Destiny comes out, not all the shows are going to talk about Destiny, but, you know, Rob and I will on our shows. But you and I also have a, a unique ability to kind of ha- be warned in advance what each other's talking about a little bit, yes. because um, you know we have a, a forum on our network that only show hosts can see, and in one of those particular forums, uh, we actually plot out my co-hosts on Orange Launch Radio, and I actually plot out these are the stories we're going to talk about on the show this week. Bobby can see that, mm-hmm. so he, and as another video game show, he has an idea what we're going to be talking about. And some weeks it's inevitable. There's just too much going on. Like, you know, the PlayStation 4 launched this week. Of course we're both going to talk about that. But then, you know, other weeks we can, you know, maybe Bobby's going to emphasize this and we know to not emphasize it. Right. Just kind of, br- you know, brush. And, and one thing to note about, you know, just our the, between our two shows is that we're on the same night. We're live. I'm Sunday nights at 8. I go from 8 to 9. They start at 9 and you're out in California, so it's 6 for you until well, about midnight. Or to be whenever you finish. Yeah, probably. but <laughs> see, here's the thing. At 8.50, I call them. And I don't know if you guys remember, uh, you know, back when the Colbert Report started, you know how, like, in the Daily Show at the end, John Stewart would talk to Stephen Colbert for, like, two minutes. Well, we do that every week for about ten minutes. And we'll sit there and banter between my, me and then their studio out in Sacramento and banter about some of the stuff I talk about. And then I'm like, okay, so what are you guys going to be talking about? And we, then we go over that. And then, then I'm like, okay, we'll tune into them and you'll hear more about stuff. Because I'll maybe cover one or two different topics and you'll cover, like, 30. <laughs> well... There's, there's a little more time for us. Yes. Yeah, a little more time. Yeah. What about you, Justin? Uh, we keep it really easy, actually. Uh, part of the way I've built uh, our network is that we have very specific topics for each of our shows. So even though we cover television, we cover video games, our video game podcast is strictly video game news or a specific topic that week. Uh, societal topic, we'll say. Um, or we, we cover TV shows, we have a Game of Thrones podcast, so if someone else did want to come on and create another show, we're not going to have another Game of Thrones podcast. You know, please pick another show. <laughs> um, and, and even, uh, you know, one of our contributors, like, he does B-movies. That's our video cast. He's a B-movie bunker, and it's just five minutes railing on whatever movie he saw that, that week. Uh, so we sort of try to keep it really concise that way so we're not duplicating content because it is such a, a broad network. Like people have asked this because we have two Doctor Who podcasts on our network. The one is Doctor Who television and the other one is the audios. So there's never a worry about overlapping there. Mm-hmm. Three. Three. Turns. Turns. She hasn't been doing it for a while, so <laughs> I'm not really worried about that. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing we have to worry about sometimes is consistency of the shows and such. Just sometimes they go six months between the show and such. And, you know, we should be a little tighter with scheduling. If they go, hey, if you don't do this, you're off the network type thing. But, you know, I want to keep it kind of like friendly still. But the fact that it's only one or two that's like that, I mean, the rest of them are, I mean, most of our shows are pretty regular. Pretty regular kind of thing, and they're yeah. coming out. So, so but um, do you guys have any questions about starting a network or 
stuff. Come on up to the microphone so people can hear you. Well, I can't feed this one. Okay. <laughs> um, just a question about quality and how important you think it might be because I spend, as I'm sure once of you do, so many hours editing one episode for an hour long episode for a week. Oh, yeah. And I'm wondering exactly how worth it it actually is. It's You'll totally hear podcasts that are so successful that have like just a couple Skype microphones and they barely just do any of these in and out. So it, a lot but a lot of those are big name celebrities that you know, talk yeah. and stuff. But even them, they still do editing on it, you know. I mentioned this yesterday at one of the panels I was at and I got I get very lucky because the job I do but my real life is sitting in front of a computer designing web pages and interfaces and such. So I usually listen to I used to listen to podcasts all the time. Now it's most of the time editing and such. For an ESO podcast, a typical day is, you know, I edit it, start editing around nine o'clock in the morning, you know, when I'm working and such, and I'm usually done by two o'clock and stuff. But it's not for one episode. But also, but you're not doing that consistent. I'm not doing it consistent yeah. because, you know, meetings and, you know, people come into my office and I can't have garage band to open on my other monitor and everything with people to come in and see and such. To, you know, but, um, yeah, it's, for me, it's an average for, say, if we did an hour and a half episode, probably double that time for editing. Boy, I hope nobody from Mike's day job's listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, totally. I, also, I also think, though, it's a, it really is important is if you're creating a podcast to make it true to what you want to do. So if it's just, a, you know, um, you, know you and a, another person just uh, chatting and, and you want to release that and you feel comfortable releasing it unedited, I mean, I know that, you know, one of my favorite podcasts out there and pretty successful as far as comic podcasts is Comic Geek Speak. And they don't do any editing at all. Um, I mean, it's all just them just talking because they're the basis of their show is it's just like guys at a comic shop having a conversation and then releasing that out there. And it reaches a lot of people because of the style and the and the, and the, the characters that they are. Um, so in some cases, it might be really necessary for you to, to edit and make the show exactly the way you want it to be. In other cases, it's not so necessary. It just depends on the style of show that you want to do and. And I think when we're looking for new shows, um, that's the thing, or it's even when I'm as a listener looking for a new podcast, that's what you want, is you want a unique experience and you want an entertaining experience, no matter, and a different style, not every, not every two podcasts should be the same. Exactly. Charles McFall, uh, thehelicarrier.com, and you have to let me, I've got a lot of questions, so if somebody comes up, just let me know. <laughs> So we're going to start, my, me and my partner's going to launch a niche specific network of the Helicarrier. Right. And it's about the Marvel Universe. And so, I've done a network before, so a lot of the things you talked about earlier, I've already hit on quality, your niche, what are you going to do differently. But as far as you're talking about one day making money, and I don't know what VOG does, do you have a business plan on how you're going to become break even, much less profitable. I thought he was going to say millionaires. I swear to God. In the game, in the real sense of launching a network, you have a plan, a, a roadmap, if you will, even, of where you're going to go with it, not just a bunch of friends doing shows. Um, we do have a plan. Um, a lot of it is still in the working stages with us. This is the first year we've actually started, created an LLC to be able to write off coming to Dragon Con, mm -hmm. write off buying microphones. <coughs> Excuse me. And also being, you know, being able to do more of a business area. That's where we've also added in the profit sharing for Mike and Bobby and the other hosts cool. of the show to be able to, <laughs> you know, to enjoy once we start making a profit after we are able to sus fully sustain the network without me, you know, having to do it or anything. Because we're invited to conventions all across the country, but we can't do it because it comes out of our pockets and such. And they're not, Dragon Con, yes, they give us free badges, but they don't put us up in a hotel, they don't cover our travel expenses and such. No big con is gonna do that for, you know, unless your name is Chris Hardwick or, you know, someone like Adam Corolla or something like that. About you guys. And we are, we're actually kind of in the same boat. We, we are still in the process of getting all the LLC paperwork in ourselves uh, for, for us. So we, we became also a business entity so we could help with, with all that stuff. And we kind of have a general plan of how to, how to break even. We know how much we need to make break even. And we think we have a listener base that we could, you know, sell shirts or something and, and do stuff like that. Uh, but we haven't 
done too much long-term planning yet because we're still trying to we want to make the right long-term plan instead right. of saying oh you know we're going to do this and you know be millionaires in in two years and quit our day jobs now. I, I think that's the other important thing i mean at least, at least for our perspective is at least i can speak for myself here i i definitely view what i do as a hobby and I'm not thinking that I'm going to profit from it anytime soon. I might, we have ideas on how to make that work, that's great. But if I'm not comfortable doing something for the network that's gonna come 100% out, out of my pocket, I don't do it. So, you know, you kind of have to play that, you know, kind of game and, and when you assess, you know, is this, is this a good buy or not, is that, you know what, you might not make money. A lot of podcasters don't. So, is it worth it from the hobbyist standpoint or not? And, and my thing is, I like my day job, so I'm not stressed about trying to make VOG something that pays my living. That that relieves a lot of stress. Yeah, if it pay, I'd love for it to pay for itself, and maybe you know some extra beer money. That you know it comes to me personally. That'd be great, but I am not relying on it to replace my day job because I like where I work. So I guess that's kind of the delineation. There is, or any of your net, we not the nerdist obviously but something like we want to build something that will be big yes. push out media yep. so and instead of well because Robbie you had said hobbyist so you so you're definitely with EOS I'm sorry or ESO EOS yeah. EOS something yeah. like that yeah. 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 I'm sorry it's a great network yeah. and, and we have mutual friends I'm just big on you sorry uh, so you definitely have plans to say okay instead of going from hobby we're going to take this to a, a real really business and try to do something with I it I would love it to I don't ever see it replacing my day job okay but I definitely could see it sustaining itself. Yeah, a couple of years ago, it really, I'm even more than that. So like when I started, it was really um, a, a lot more of a, a hobby and, and I had that mentality. But, um, you know, since the Hardware, Chris Hardware's network, as well as the Smodcast network and yeah. Podcast One, and I've seen a lot of these uh, network entities uh, really come into the forefront and start to really make an impact, I think, you know, it is a possibility and it is a, a goal that we should try to strive for. But yet, by the same token, um, you know, it's one of those things where uh, uh, if, there, if, it's, if it's not fun and if it's not going to be, if it's, it involves like changing uh, the way we do things, uh, then maybe not. No, but exactly. But, but doing what we've done, we, for, and we've been doing this a few years now. So it, we've, we've at least reached people. I mean, we're, we now have people contacting us saying, can I come on your show? Which, you know, a few years ago, every week we were like, we need people for the show. You know, we're begging people. Now we're turning people away. So, I mean, people are, you know, we've got like like actors and, and like uh, writers. writers and, you know, authors. They do too yeah. much too soon and it's exactly. all going to collapse right. on itself. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we, you know, we started small and then now we've been around two years. So now we're adding the LLC so we can grow a little bit bigger and then let that mature. And so, you know, yeah, it might not be profitable in the next couple of years. I hope it will be, you know, at a point in the future, but I'm not going to say it has to be profitable by Christmas or I'm shutting it all down and I'm flipping the exactly. servers off. And one, one of our things is we're at the point now we've put out a call for marketing people to help get our name out there even more so and just to create brand recognition and stuff. But there you go. You're corporate now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're, shut up, and we're trying to just get, you know, we want people to know, you know, this is the first year I've actually been a guest here at Dragon Cottage, but all the clubs of the podcast and everything, what we've created. Um, we've been, all of us, Bob Mike's been here for his comic, Bobby for his writing and such, but this is the first year We've all been recognized for being the podcast and then such, you know, media badges and all that kind of stuff. And that's the perks that come with it. And that's kind of the fun. Yeah. But there also is a dark side to this. There's a huge dark side that all podcasters need to know about. It's the patent trolls. They can shut this whole thing down. If um, there's a lawsuit for those who don't know right now that Adam Carolla is fighting against these patent trolls. They settled. Yeah, they did settle. They settled. <laughs> So we're safe. Well, we don't know. For we don't know. They can't talk for forty days. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that, still fighting, I yeah. Yeah, because only Adam Carolla settled, not yeah. Yeah, the yeah. other people. So the EFF is still fighting, but the Adam Carolla settlement is going to maybe Define help the rest of everybody. Yeah, help everybody else. Right. It is a it is a constant battle that we're all going to have to look at. Yeah. So I think there's somebody behind. Me yeah. Behind me. I was, so the last thing I'll leave it here is. Um, I know for everybody in the room, they seem to be more wanting to get on networks. 
What specifically is each of your network looking for when you pick up a new show? I mean, your two minute elevator speech of this is what our network does, this is our niche, and here's how you fit. You guys want to start? Go for it. <laughs> You're does this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we are definitely looking to diversify more geek content uh, uh, at the Voice Geeks Network. We really emphasize participation. If you want to get people not just listen to your show, but participate with your show, that's something we really emphasize with the Voice Geeks Network. It's not just um, it's not just a giant RSS feed. It's also you know it's it's also a game. Voice Geeks Network is a gamified website where people can get points and loot for checking in to participating with your show. So if you're like a highly interactive show, um, that you, and you might be something we're looking for. Uh, especially, I know just kind of like getting really into the weeds, something we're really looking for right now, a comic book show is high on my list of desires. And um, there's something else I was just say. Oh, a fiction-based show, like a, a weekly uh, I'd actually serial. Like get, I'd like to get an audio drama. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, yeah. That's yeah. a big thing right now, actually. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys heard of Thrilling Adventure Hour? Los Angeles. I have oh, been. it is an awesome, awesome, awesome podcast. They're like the leaders in that, and they do all original content, but in old timey radio. Oh, that's nice. awesome. That's yeah, very we, had, cool. we had a panel yesterday in here about that with several authors that, that write specifically for or write and use uh, audio dramas to help market their work. But yeah, I don't want to take up too much more time, but if you are interested in more information, please come talk to one of us after. <laughs> we also have flyers in the back, and you can contact us after Dragon Con. Okay, yeah, uh, we're pretty easy. Uh, you need to be passionate about what it is you're talking about, because it takes a lot of work. Ideally, if you are comfortable editing, I might love you. Because <laughs> uh, my network is very much a one-woman show. Uh, for the most part, but yes, have a be passionate, have a very clear, concise idea of what you want your show to be. If it's something that you're going to have multiple co-hosts, come to me with a plan as to how that's going to work. Because uh, it doesn't necessarily work for everybody to just talk at once. Mm -hmm. um, you have to learn that big time. Yeah, <laughs> or or if you think that you're gonna you're gonna cover different subcategories of the same topic, like. Have that sort of formatted. Like, give me an idea of what you want your show to be at the end. Um, and yeah, just make sure it sort of fits in. A lot of it's going to be tonal uh, for us because we are a very passionate network, um, but it's also very much about our own personal opinions because geek culture is subjective. Um, so, sort of have your own voice there. Um, I guess for us, we will take, you know, we're not beyond taking a startup. But you have to have an idea what you're doing. You need to be able to have be fully self-sustained. I'll help train you guys on how to do a podcast, where to host, where to get your RSS feed out there, how to get onto iTunes. We'll help with all that. I've probably done three quarters of the podcasts that are on the network. I've helped them get started with that. Um, but we are also looking for established shows. Shows that fit the same geeky genre like these guys do. Also, we are looking for something diverse that no one else is talking about on the network. We're always open to new ideas. If somebody, you know, wants to do another, say, like magazine show like we do, but they would have to be different than ESO. We don't want an ESO clone. Right, because we've already got like two magazine style shows that cover both. Exactly. Can, Between us and can I also add something? I don't know about you guys, if you, if you guys encourage this, but I very much encourage collaboration with other podcasters, yes. yes. other oh, sites. Yeah. You need to be comfortable with that. It can't just be about your show. Exactly. I mean, generally, as a podcasting environment, as a community, it is that community aspect. That's um, the, that's I mean, I've been on your show yeah. like 13 times or something. Yeah, you're, um, I mean, you're a go-to girl. We, 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 quite, we quite often have people from other podcasts come on, you know, like we did a recent episode where we looked at like Quantum Leap and we had a guy come on from a Quantum Leap podcast and he was there and we let him be promoting his show while he's on our show. Yeah. And even if he is, he's not part of our network or anything like that. So yeah, very much a, yeah, there is a lot of that collaboration. And that's the wonderful thing about podcasting too. I would be careful about people too. who aren't looking for that. Also, yeah. if you're looking for an exclusive deal, be very careful about that. If you're creating something and you go to join a network, Look very closely at any deal that's going to ask you to be exclusive to that network. You really need to investigate that network, what your own creative project is, 
and make sure that's a really good fit and that whatever term that contract is for, you're comfortable with that. Talk to the po- other podcasters that are on that network and see yes. what PSO yeah. or any of the other networks do for you because a lot of that is also very, it can harm you if you're only being heard in one place. And, you know, this is not like radio where you're on CBS or Clear Time or whatever. And, you know, a lot of us don't even have sponsors. And we don't have to answer to anyone except for yourself. And, you know, but you also have to be able to live with yourself. And I recorded that. <laughs> but thing, so. Yes, once it's out there, it is out yeah. there. Okay, got a question. Hi. Uh, I, do you guys know of the game League of Legends? I'm yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Uh, my friends and I are we're huge players of the game, love it, and lately we've been thinking that we like, we can just play, and then we talk about it over the patches and everything like that, and you know, it's just what we've been thinking about doing podcasts for, but we don't really know where to go from that, like how to get noticed, we don't want to make money from it really, you know, we just want to have fun and let people talk hear our discussions, uh-huh. you know? uh, that's what we're completely interested in, and we were wondering if, what's the likelihood of a network like you guys to even be interested in something? Talk to us. Absolutely That's the best thing. Yeah. After, is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> literally, literally, don't ever be afraid to, if you have an idea for a podcast, never ever be afraid to come up and like, talk to us. Right. Yeah, word, ask. You know, ask questions. That's how I learned how to do podcasting. I was like listening to podcasts, other Doctor Who podcasts or some of the other ones, and it's like, oh, if these schmucks can do it, why can't I? Okay. And everything. Mm-hmm. So I literally went to other podcasters. And I asked them, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I got some fantastic advice. It, that's another thing you can tell the quality of the people if they're willing to help you. You know, also, do you really want to be with people who don't want to help you? Granted, also, please be willing to do some work yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. We have limited time. We're willing to help you, but you have to be willing to take on some of that responsibility as well mm-hmm. uh, for, for researching, to, for finding your, you know, we can give you a resource, but maybe. Look into that first, then come back to us. We will say no. (laughs) (laughs) You you could also, I mean, in terms of actually see about maybe doing a segment for the show or something as a start. Let me ask a quick question, though, because you mentioned, you know, you do League of Legends. Are you you doing a Twitch thing right now? Uh, Actually, yes, I am on Twitch. I just started a little while ago, but I've also done my own editing YouTube videos. Okay. For years. So you, you, honestly, getting into that scene, you're going to be like halfway there. Twitch wasn't even a thing that we had like a few years ago, so it's a very new sort of thing. So by getting in there and creating compelling Twitch content, you're going to be halfway there. But the challenge is when you, and you have to decide, do you want to do a YouTube? Are you going to be a vodcast, a more video show? Or are you going to be an audio only show? Because then the question is, it's very easy to sit there and let the game visuals tell your story when you're doing a thing on Twitch. But when you're doing a podcast, you don't have that. So you have to be able to tell that compelling story yourself. And Twitch can kind of help you learn to do that. But it, you know, depending on what you guys choose to do, if you take the video away, what's going to replace it? You can't have dead air. Yeah, you can't dead air is not, bad. This is radio. You can't. Think about it. What? If people don't, if they hear dead air, they think their audio player is broken or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, it's basically the theater of the mind they call it, and you have to basically describe everything to them. And we also consider video casts um, as part of our network. Uh, the important part you just said was because you do the commentary. We do not post playthroughs. Uh, they're, they're interesting. People watch them. People will watch them in droves. However, it doesn't provide any additional content. Uh, and so one of the things that we really look at and why we haven't posted any yet is because too many people are just doing playthroughs. We want your individual aspect on that. We want your commentary. Uh, So that's definitely a really great route to go. Just to jump in with the playthrough things too, that's very tricky territory with the copyright stuff right now too and and what we're seeing with the the YouTube strikes. So I can see I wouldn't want to play that game either. It's, it's It's too risky. But it's good supplemental con- content yeah, as well because um, you know we we both do it where we'll sometimes you know yeah we've got our own podcast but then you know I'll go on Twitch and do something and it's just added content it doesn't go on my podcast feed but it's just somewhere else that we can interact with our audience and they can right. participate. With yeah, us. we consider it like part of your little social media mm-hmm. marketing or, campaign or, or campaign. getting yourself and your name and your brand out there is yeah. a big part of that. Because there are podcasts out there that do like live streaming at mm-hmm. the same time. And they even have chat rooms involved with it. 
where <laughs> you know where your the listeners are involved with it and they're typing and sometimes there's a better conversation going on in the chat room than even on the show. And, and sometimes it's worse. Yeah. And I have to pick through it because I always try to say I'm going to read the intelligent comments from chat and then I realize every week I'm talking to gamers. So. Yeah, I know. Mike, Mike's tried that to get, to get us to do that for our show and I'm just like, you really want our unedited show to go out? <laughs> But, but, when, but when you do that kind of stuff, when you like involve a live chat room and stuff, you need to figure out how you're, when you're going to look at chat mm -hmm. and you know how you're going to do it. Like you know, I do the show all by myself, so I actually do have dead air on my live on my live feed. But then when I when my podcast, I go through and I cut all that out. But you're also very good about warning people, like, hey, I'm reading chat. You know? Yeah, I'm reading chat. Here's dead air. Like, let's just assume I'm playing copyrighted music and it's getting copyright striked. But, <laughs> but OLR, but but you got OLR. Like when other people are doing stories. Rob's reading chat and he's like, okay, so so-and-so says this, and here's the thing, never underestimate the power of saying somebody's name on the radio. Exactly. It doesn't, you know, yeah, you may think, oh, I'm not a big name. No, you're on the radio. You have a microphone and you just said someone's name. And they, they right. love that. They eat that up. And so that's the participation aspect. Yeah, we have a, we have a guy that was on our show a few times and we, we joke, we made a joke about him like locking himself in an airlock. That became a running joke long after he, I mean, he hasn't been on the show in a while. But he's like, he loves it. And like, people think we just made him up. We were newer listeners. Exactly. And I remember we had, um, we did an episode of, was, was, was it last year. It was last year when we did the G.I. Joe episode. So he, he came on that one, and Phantom Troublemaker, who's another one of our, our podcasters, was on there. And he's like, oh my God, he's real? <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a nice little bit. But, but yeah, you know, he's become a big fan of that because we, we make fun of him all the time. And he also gets name recognition. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so both the ESO group and uh, Bach had mentioned that they started out as uh, with one network and then have now formed their own. Mm -hmm. So when do you, as a as an independent podcast, when do you decide either to form your own network or look for an existing one or just stay independent and not do any network affiliation? It's yeah. truthfully, it's a personal call. Um, some people like being on Geek Nation, you know, the other network we were on. Um, there's still podcasts on there, and part of the reason for leaving them was a financial reason, truthfully. Um, but with us, once you get past one show, you need to have some kind of group or something to start forming, and it only it was natural. Our our forming of ESO Network just happened to happen. It it was a natural progression for us as we started spinning off, and other people wanted to under the umbrella and such for us. Well, yeah, it was a nice, it was a nice touch of branding. Exactly. You know, and it just happened that Earth Station 1 fit perfectly into ESO. You know, it just was like, an acronym. Awesome. <laughs> so. Yeah, with us, it was, it was part ideological and it was personal, some personal stuff as well. Um, you know, we had some ideas and, you know, but our ideas started down here and, the, you know, all games, they had been around for a long time, so their ideas were way out here. And we wanted to try some smaller stuff, and you know there was there were a lot of people there, and they didn't particularly buy into what we were doing, and that's kind of when we were like, you know, well maybe we should try to see if we could do this, you know, on you know, go on our own and see if any of our ideas work. Uh, and so it was it was a personal decision as well, uh, but but you know it, you have to look and see if you are you going to offer anything different with your network. Uh, and that's kind of what we looked at is, you know, what can we do differently that we don't think other people are doing? Doesn't mean that we're the first to do it. We just don't know of the others that are doing some of the stuff we do. Uh, and so that's kind of when we decided, let's try it and yeah. see if it sticks. And if it doesn't, okay, that was fun. Mm -hmm. But also, um, a, a question for all of you here, though, that kind of goes with that. When you're, if you do set up a network and you, you set up your network, there's also the things that, that you have to, to, to think about or do that don't really, that's like, like when Mike, when you're hosting, you still have to worry about a podcast you don't host or edit or anything because they're part of your network. I mean, what, what are the things that you guys do outside of actual podcast creation that's part of the network? Well, for me, it's, I look, sadly enough, I listen to all of the shows. Well, that's a good that's selling sad. point. Yeah. That's that's not sad. Sad. <laughs> no, because it just it takes up so much time. And this is why we don't do live episodes. No, no. <laughs> but literally, um, with our shows, I have to listen to them because you know you want them to keep, make sure they're keeping up with higher high quality and such. That's my main thing is they're keeping the quality. 
the consistency and just something that people will enjoy listening to and such. We had um, we had one podcast that we had on the network, and they went through a pretty bad shakeup of their cast. And when they reformed without their original host, the, the show sucked. And that's pure and simple. Mm -hmm. And so we had to drop them off the network and such. And you know, we've had like two or three we've had to let go just because of stuff like that. Or there's people, there were people on the show that it started becoming very negative towards the topic of what they were doing, and I didn't want that on. I wasn't <coughs> want that part of VSO. So a lot of it's making sure that the the, the quality, the quality and the nature of the is what you exactly. Want the, yeah. Exactly. I'm assuming that's the same for you guys. Is, well, actually, one thing I kind of wanted to, because I've kind of been stewing on the question here, I've been kind of thinking about is that, you know, we're talking a lot about structured networks and kind of a lot of things that we look for in, you know, our very structured networks when it comes to quality and, and these sorts of things. But that doesn't mean that all networks are necessarily as structured as maybe what you're hearing about today. Um, for example, well, it, it's, networks can also be very simple. Um, for example, I know I'm involved with a group of GLBT gaming podcasters that it's kind of an informal, you know, we have a Facebook group, we all talk to each other, but in a way that's kind of a network because these guys will shout out all their friend podcasts at the end of every episode. I try to give them some increased uh, exposure on social media and so forth, and that's a network. It might not be a structured network like what we're talking about. But, you know, since you're talking about do I or don't I, you know, go with this network, maybe you, maybe you want to do something a little more informal, and I think that's okay, too. Yeah. Exactly. We have time for one more question. Anybody else? Not worried about one. Go for it. Hello. Howdy. How do you repair Sorry. your network that you may have damaged in the past? What do you mean? How like, you if, you, if you maybe potentially burn bridges or... Uh, maybe even over in California, or like there's certain select people that you've talked to, hung out with, you uh, maybe ended up getting drunk with, or <laughs> and then it was a bad uh, session. What kind well, of networking are you just switch over? <laughs> Did you just switch over to the next, to the next big thing? Or? Are you talking about over at the Hyatt, or uh, <laughs> for buckets of rum? Or? <laughs> oh, I mean, it, either way, whether it was like from maybe you said something bad on the air, that's, or that's actually any kind of business or any kind of personal relationship if, you know, there might be somebody who has a group or organization that you have gone to in the past for news about their group and such and you got into an argument with them or got into a fight, sometimes you just have to let time go by yeah. and yeah. let it heal and come, then come back to it, you know, and be a better man or woman for it. I think it, it's interesting too because one of the things you have to realize is that when you're podcasting and you're putting your, you know, yourself out there, and so um, you know you do have uh, at times uh, you know the chance of offending somebody or something happening, and it's not going to be a private matter, but because of your podcaster, it's going to be a public matter, um, and it, it it is tough to sometimes work through that sometimes, but. Uh, like he said, I mean, I you know, I just try to keep things as, as on that end as, as as private as I can, and uh, not let things blow out of proportion. Because sometimes stuff does happen, but it, it the 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 hard and fast rule that I have anyway is just not to not to let it get any more public than it needs to be. Okay. Yeah. Time. Time. People <laughs> people will eventually grow up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's including cool. yourself. <laughs> not that kind of time, right? All right, it is time. For the panel to be over. Oh, Very sad. Right. Sad face. All right. Oh. Thank you, guys. Uh, also, if you uh, bring up the DragonCon application, you can rate this panel and let us know if 